There are three elements of gross income. First, it is a return on capital that increases net worth. Second, it is a realized benefit. And third, it is not exempted by law, contract, or treaty. I already discussed the first element, which is a return on capital that increases the net worth of the taxpayer. Now let's proceed to the second element, which is a realized benefit. What does it mean by benefit? Pag sinabi natin benefit, it means advantage. Paano nagkakaroon ng benefit ang isang taxpayer? Pag merong increase in the net worth of the taxpayer. At paano naman natin masasabi na nag-increase yung net worth ng taxpayer? Pag nakareceive siya ng income, donation, or inheritance. Ang ibig sabihin ng inheritance, mana. Do not forget that if there is an increase in the net worth of the taxpayer, it is already taxable. The following are not benefits, therefore the following are not taxable. First is the receipt of a loan. In a loan, properties increase but liability also increases. Sa loan, nakatanggap tayo ng pera, that's why tumaas ang ating property. Pero tumaas din naman ang ating liability kasi babayaran pa rin natin yung loan in the future. So this is not a benefit. And since this is not a benefit, this is not taxable. Next is the discovery of lost profits. Ang discovery of lost profits is not taxable and is not a benefit kasi under the law, the finder has an obligation to return the same to the owner. It means that if you find 1,000 pesos, for example, you have the obligation to return that 1,000 pesos to the real owner. And third is the receipt of money or property to be held in trust for or to be remitted to another person. The realized concept. What does it mean by realized? Realized means earned. In order for the taxpayer to be entitled of the benefit, there should be a degree of undertaking or sacrifice from the taxpayer. Next, what are the requisites of a realized benefit? Pag sinabi natin requisites, lahat ng nakalista dyan should be met or lahat ng nakalista dyan ay dapat meron. First, there must be an exchange transaction. Paano ba natin masasabi na merong exchange transaction? Pag meron tayong value received at meron tayong value given. For example, sa sale. Sale is an exchange transaction. Bakit? Kasi meron tayong value received at value given. Di ba? Pag nagkaroon tayo ng sale or nagbenta tayo, makaka-receive tayo ng pera. Pero meron naman tayong ibibigay sa customer or client, gaya ng goods. Second, the transaction involves another entity, but not the same entity. Take note of that. And third, it increases the net worth of the recipient. So, hindi yan nawawala. It increases the net worth of the recipient. Parang element siya ng gross income na kung saan dapat merong increase sa net worth ng taxpayer. Types of transfers. We have three types of transfers and they are as follows. First, bilateral transfers. Second, unilateral transfers. And third, complex transfers transactions. The first type of transfers is called bilateral transfers 
or simply referred to as exchanges. So, pag sinabing exchanges, automatic na yon ang tinutukoy niya ay bilateral transfers. Examples of bilateral transfers are sale and barter. Sa sale, ang ibibigay mo ay goods, pero ang marireceive mo is pera. Sa barter naman, ang ibibigay mo ay goods, pero ang marireceive mo ay goods pa rin. So that is the difference between sale and barter. Sa so word na bilateral, mahati yan sa dalawa, buy and lateral. Buy means to. Kaya tinawag na bilateral transfers kasi the two parties which are involved in the exchange transactions have degree of undertaking or sacrifice. Gaya nung sa sale, may degree of undertaking si seller at meron ding degree of undertaking si buyer. Si seller, siya ang magpo-provide ng goods or siya ang magbibenta ng goods. Si buyer naman, siya ang magbabayad ng pera. Bilateral transfers are also called as onerous transactions. Kasi pag sinabing onerous, it means you are expecting something in return. For example, sa sale, you are exchanging your goods for money. So that means, ang ine-expect mo, something in return is yung pera or yung bayad. Sa point of view naman ni buyer, ang ine-expect niya, something in return is yung goods. The second type of transfers is called unilateral transfers or simply referred to as Transfers. So, pag sinabing transfers, automatic na yon Ang ibig sabihin niya ay unilateral transfers. We have two examples of unilateral transfers. We have succession and donation. Succession is a transfer of property upon death. Sa succession, ang ibig sabihin nun, this is a transfer of property from a dead person to a living person. So, transfer siya ng property from patay to buhay na tao. Pag sinabi namang donation, this is a transfer of property from a living person to another living person. So, transfer ng property from buhay to buhay. Okay? These are also referred to as gratuitous transactions. Ang ibig sabihin ng gratuitous, it means free. So you are giving that property or you are transferring that property without expecting something in return. Benefits derived from onerous transactions are subject to income tax. While benefits derived from gratuitous transactions are subject to transfer tax but not to income tax. The third type of transfers is called complex transactions. Complex transactions are partly gratuitous and partly onerous. That means this is a combination of bilateral transfers and unilateral transfers. These are commonly referred to as transfers for less than full and adequate consideration. The gratuitous portion of the transaction is subject to transfer tax, while the benefit from the onerous portion is subject to income tax. For example, a taxpayer sold his car which was previously purchased for 100,000 pesos and with a current fair value of 180,000 pesos for only 130,000 pesos. Normally, dapat ibenta ni taxpayer yung kanyang car at fair value. 
Pero ang nangyari is that si taxpayer, binenta niya yung car niya for only 130,000 pesos instead of 180,000 pesos. That's why ang complex transactions, tinatawag din siya na transfers for less than full and adequate consideration kasi tinatransfer natin yung property or transfer natin yung car below the fair value. Now, let's analyze the transaction. Fair value is 180,000. Selling price is 130,000. And cost is 100,000 pesos. Now, which of the following is subject to transfer tax and which of the following is subject to income tax? Yung gratuitous portion is subject to transfer tax at yung onerous portion that is subject to income tax. Let's compute first the difference between the fair value and selling price. So, 180,000 minus 130,000, that is 50,000. Now, ito yung tinatawag natin na gratuitous portion. At this is subject sa transfer tax. Now, yung difference naman ng selling price and cost, that is called as the onerous portion. And since this is the onerous portion, this is subject to income tax. So let's compute 130,000 minus 100,000 rather, that is 30,000 pesos. And this 30,000 pesos is subject to income tax. What is meant by another entity? A taxable item of gross income arises from transactions which involve another natural or juridical entity. So that means by residual definition, yung income that arises from transactions which involve the same entity is not taxable. Pag sinabi natin natural entity, it means living persons, while juridical entity refers to those created by law, such as partnerships and corporation. The following are taxable. First, gains or income derived between relatives, corporations, and between a partner and the partnership. Second, the income between affiliated companies. Pag sinabi natin affiliated companies, ang example nito ay yung parent and subsidiary. Bakit taxable ang mga ito? Kasi yung income ay na-derived between separate entities. Yung relatives, corporations, partner, partnership, parent and subsidiary are separate entities. Basta pag sinabing separate entities, yung income na madiderive between the separate entities ay palaging taxable. The following are not taxable. First, the sales of a home office to its branch office. And second, the income between the businesses of a proprietor. Yung sale ng home office sa branch office is not taxable kasi yung home office and yung branch office ay iisang entity. Let's say for example, yung home office is nakalocate sa Manila at yung branch office nakalocate sa province. Kahit na magkaiba sila ng location, they pertain to same entity pa rin. Okay? Next is the income between businesses of a proprietor. Bakit hindi siya taxable? Kasi yung proprietorship businesses are taxable upon the same owner. That means iisa lang yung may-ari. Take note, 
na doon sa ating sole proprietorship business, iisa lang ang may-ari. Okay? And take note that a proprietorship business is not a juridical entity but rather a natural entity kasi iisa lang ang may-ari.